Now that the kids are back in school, we can get back to hitting the books. This month's book on Lee's library list is Crazy Rich Asians by Kevin Kwan. This book came out over the summer and I was able to get it at my local library after a two week wait. It's also available via ebook at several of our local libraries. This is Mr. Kwan's first novel and it is great. Great in the number of characters, the reader's actually given a family tree which lays out the families whose stories are told in the book. It's a little complicated. Great in the number of pages, somewhere around the 400 page mark, and great in the way Mr. Kwan tells the stories of these crazy rich Asians. I come from a middle class family and I never wanted for anything growing up and as an adult I've been very lucky and I've always had everything I needed and more. I'll admit that when the Powerball jackpot reaches that hundred million dollar or more mark, I buy a ticket and I dream about what life would be like if I woke up with tens of millions of dollars. In Mr. Kwan's book, these characters live out this fantasy every day. Some of the characters come from old money and some come from new money. They're all Chinese, but they've moved over to Singapore and live quite lavishly. Although the list of characters is a mile long involving the entire Yang, Shang, and Xian clan, the central stories revolve around Nick Young and his girlfriend of almost two years, Rachel Chu, and Astrid Leung, Nick's cousin. Nick is a struggling professor at NYU, and Rachel's an economics professor on the fast track to being a leader in her department. They live together, but until now there's been little talk of marriage, although after Nick invites Rachel to spend the summer with his family in Singapore so they can attend the wedding of his best friend, Rachel's friends, and especially her mother, think it's Nick's intention to propose. What Rachel doesn't know is that Nick's family is crazy rich, and they're crazy. They come from old money and believe strongly in keeping the bloodline pristine, meaning no ABC, American born Chinese, don't worry, I didn't know it either. No ABC girl whose real estate mother came from an unknown family in China's mainland. When Rachel arrives in Singapore, she is shocked to see how the 1% live there. In her first week, she is whisked away to a pri on a private jet to a private island to celebrate a bachelorette party. She meets Nick's family, all but a few who think she's a gold digger, and after attending a $40 million wedding, finds out that Nick does in fact want to propose, but is stopped by his meddling mother, who tells Rachel a secret about Rachel's father that sends her reeling into a spiral of depression. Also happening throughout all this drama is the drama in Astrid Leung's world. Astrid is described as a beautiful, sophisticated, intelligent woman who women want to be and men want to be with. She has taste fitting of Princess Grace and the bank account that would make Bill Gates look poor. Astrid is married to a good looking, hard working, upper class man and together they have a beautiful little boy. After returning from one of her infamous Paris couture shopping trips, she is eager to reconnect with her husband. As he freshens up just before joining her in bed, his cell phone goes off. Thinking it's hers, Astrid picks it up and sees a suggestive text message from an unknown number to her husband's phone. She worries a bit that he may have acquired a mistress, but in her social circle, that's very common for husbands to do. She tries to push it out of her mind. A few weeks later, she comes upon a receipt that reveals her husband was not where he said he was going to be. After finding out her husband purchased an expensive piece of jewelry that didn't make its way over to Astrid, she finds that she is consumed with the fact that her husband is having an affair. It upsets her to such a degree that she gets into a car accident, injuring herself and her young son. This book opened up a whole new world to me. I read things about rich people, but not people this rich. I love that it's centered around a culture that I knew very little about. Mr. Kwan beautifully describes local customs, foods, deep-seated traditions, Cantonese slang, and all of the gorgeous scenery in Singapore. I also enjoyed the way that Mr. Kwan developed each storyline in a realistic way. I know that sounds odd, since most people don't socialize with royalty or live in homes that are valued over $100 million, but Mr. Kwan makes it work. He sheds light on the existing modern caste system, paralleling storylines more towards Downton Abbey than those of the Housewives franchise shows. What I think you'll love most are the characters. He developed characters that you love to hate, like Nick's mom. Characters you'll just hate, like Nick's cousin Alistair. And characters that you'll love, like an expo of Astrid's who does one of the sweetest, most romantic things I've ever heard of. I won't tell you what it was. You'll have to read the book to find out what I'm talking about. I recommend curling up on your favorite chair with the softest blanket and maybe a pumpkin spice latte as you read this book 
and let your DVR record all the new primetime shows premiering over the next few weeks. Each month this school year, I'll be reviewing a book for you so you can decide if it makes your library list. Next month, I'm reading Orange is the New Black by Piper Kerman. Don't forget to join in the conversation on Facebook where you can let me know your thoughts on the book and give a suggestion for what we should read next. I'm Lee Pafford, and that's what's on my library list.